This is a Friday Shoes production. Target for the day is I can determine if a function is linear or nonlinear by analyzing tables, graphs, and equations. This is 10 1 in our book on page 528, linear and nonlinear functions. What's the difference between a linear function and a nonlinear function? Well, a linear, all linear functions have constant rates of change and generate straight lines when graphed. Nonlinear functions do not have constant rates of change and do not generate straight lines when graphed. Let's look at some examples. Let's look at the identifying functions using tables. Determine whether each table represents a linear or nonlinear function, and then explain. Let's take a look at number one. In the X column, you notice that the numbers are going up by two, while in the Y column, the values are going down by the same amount, which is negative 15. They're going down by 15. We would say then, as X increases by two, Y decreases by 15 each time, the rate of change is constant. So this function is linear. Let's look at number two. You can see in the X column, 1, 4, 7, 10, that's going up by 3. In the Y column, I notice that it's going up at different intervals, 15, then 33, then 51. You would say, as X increases by 3, Y increases by a greater amount each time. The rate of change is not constant, meaning it's not the same. So this function is nonlinear. Take a look at a couple examples for yourself. See if you can determine whether each table represents a linear or nonlinear function, and then explain. Well, looking at this first one, I notice that it's going up on top. The x values are going up by 5, while the y values are going down by 4. So I would say that that has a constant rate of change, therefore it is linear. Let's look at B. Second example, the X values are going up by 2 each time. And the Y values, however, what are they doing? Looks like it went up by 2 here, went up by 6 here, and it went up by 10 here. Because the change is not constant on those y's while x is constant, we would consider this nonlinear. Let's take a look at identifying functions using graphs. This is probably the easiest way to determine if something is linear or nonlinear. Determine whether each graph represents a linear or nonlinear function. Explain. We'll take a look at number three. Notice how the blue line is curved. It's a parabola. Well, since it's not a straight line, therefore, it is not going to be linear. So it's nonlinear. What they say is the graph is curved, not a straight line, so it represents a nonlinear function. Let's look at number four. Same deal. We have a blue line that is curved. Well, since it's curved, this graph is also curved, so it's representing a nonlinear function. Both of these are nonlinear functions. One thing I'd like to point out in 3 and in 4, if you look on the graph, you can see where they have the equations that have generated that curve. If you notice in this first one right here, in number 3, x squared is in there. If we have a square on the x, we're definitely going to have a curve. On the number 4, notice where the x is. It's in the exponent. That is also going to generate a curve. So there are other telltale signs you can determine if it's going to be a curve or a nonlinear function. Take a look at the examples below, C, D, and E, and check and see if you can determine if they're linear or nonlinear. I'm hoping it's pretty simple for you to do it. C, this is definitely going to be linear because there is a line, it's straight line. Obviously D is curved, therefore it is nonlinear. And E is the same way, curved, therefore it is nonlinear. 
that's how you determine if a function is linear or nonlinear using just graphs. All right, the last section, identifying functions using equations. Well, recall that equations for a linear function can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. We called that the slope y-intercept form, where m represents the constant rate of change. We call that slope. Well, let's take a look at some examples. Determine whether each equation represents a linear or nonlinear function just by looking at its equation. Well, if you notice, this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. M representing the invisible one in front of that X that we can't see, we talk about. Well, since the equation can be written, and it is in that form, Y equals 1X plus 4, or Y equals X plus 4, same thing, this function is linear. Let's take a look at number 6. Notice where the X is. It's on the bottom of a fraction. Anytime you see the X on the bottom of a fraction, that should be the telltale sign. It's not going to be linear. The equation cannot be written in the form y equals mx plus b, so this function is nonlinear. I will say, though, if you see the x on the top of the fraction, we can write it in slope-intercept form, and it will be linear. How about check your progress? Looking at f, y equals 2x to the third power plus 1. Well, I noticed something here. It looks like it's y equals mx plus b. If you look at it, mx plus b, it looks like it's in the same form, but there's a 3 here. Well, guess what? Because of that 3, this is going to be a nonlinear function. That will actually generate a curve. So this is nonlinear. All right, how about g? We've got our y equals mx. I don't see anything on the end, but if you remember from our previous lesson, you can always add in zero, and that does not change the form. It will still be linear. So this one, because it can be written in that form, y equals mx plus b, you've got yourself linear function. Then our last one, h, y equals x over 5. If you were listening to me earlier, if you have the variable x on the top of the fraction, we can still write this in slope-intercept form. Let me show you what we do. We would put a 1 in front of that x. We can still add the plus 0 like we did in the previous example. And here's what we really have. We have y is equal to 1 fifth times x. We can pull that x to the side plus 0. Notice it's now in y equals mx plus b format. Therefore, this is also a linear function. That concludes our lesson today. Remember, you can always rewatch the video, read any examples in the book. You can also watch any of the personal tutor videos online on our online textbook. This has been a, a wonderful Friday production. Friday Shoes production. <laughs>